Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me go, uh, doing an extra question because I'm trying to take advantage of my premium uh, lead code. It's February 5th uh, of 2023. Man, these years, they go by, don't they? Uh, all right, let, let's get started. Let's do a, a random one. Um, okay, to do, and let's go. Any difficulty, give me one. Well, okay, but not an SQL problem. Uh, can I... Eh, I don't want to do an SQL problem today. So all right, let's try again. I need to go through them though, but and another one. Maybe I do just need to go through them at some point. Um, but today, oh, wow, there really are. Maybe, do I only have SQL problems left? <laughs> Three problems in a row. All right, let's, let's take a look at this one. 807, max increase to keep city skyline. Um, I would also say if you're interested in SQL problems in general, let me know in the comments. I don't, I'm curious whether I should record those. Uh, I actually have a lot of years of experience on SQL. I started on SQL actually for those people who actually watch this video. You know, not many people watch the, the bonus questions these days. But um, yeah, I started on a web app in the 90s, which is a, a ridiculous sentence if, if you think I look very young, which a lot of people do. Um, yeah. Um, started a web app in the 90s. They didn't even call it web or app or whatever back then. It was just a website. And it was powered by SQL, MySQL, if you will, uh, in, uh, what's it called, ISIM or whatever? But uh, I forget what the, but they, they had a database model that was like where you still come up and I you had to back it up all the time uh, versus like Maria, which is apparently, I think, the, the thing that is people, what, what people use these days, I believe, on, on MySQL. There's, of course, a lot more, uh, SQL in general in both, um, you know, Postgres SQL and there's also like on the other side of big data stuff like Hive and and uh, and some more like real time stuff, but uh, but also like with pre processing on on data. I forget what an example of that is off my head. Uh, it's been a while, but anyway. Let's take a look at this problem and let's get started and see what this is about. And again, even though I said that I have this premium thing, this is not a premium problem. So eh, I don't know. Can, um, yeah, I wonder if I should focus on premium just in case that this gets to be a, a regular problem in the future. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow or something. Anyway, let's actually get started with uh, three minutes of me ranting. Okay, 807, max increase to keep city skyline. Okay, so there's n by n block, where each block contains a single building shaped like a vertical square prism. Hmm? Uh, so it looks something like this. Okay. And then you're given zero index of da, 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 where grid of RC in the height of it. Okay, so you're given the height. Uh, a city skyline is da, 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 Okay, we're allowed to increase the height of any number of buildings by any amount. The height of the zero building, however, increasing the height should not affect the city skyline from any car in no direction. We turn the max total sum of the height that can be increased without changing the skyline by any car in no direction. Huh, that's an interesting one. So, okay, so I think the first thing that I would think about when I look at a problem like this is try to look for invariants. I uh, I don't know how to solve this one off my head. It's not a, I mean, I have some ideas just from experience, but it's not, you know, I'm not one of those people who try to, well, even if I used to be, probably I used to be at some point, but I don't have that collection of of um, problems in my head anymore. Uh, nowadays, it's more about just <laughs> resolving everything again. Uh, but in any case, yeah, so the first thing that I would try to do, um, and I'm saying it as someone um, trying to articulate, you know, how I would attack this farm, is try to find about an invariant or an observation that I can make, right? Um, Okay, so the so one thing that I think we can do is we can look at each number or like what is n? I mean n shouldn't be that big or n square shouldn't be that big. Oh no, fifty even smaller, right? So it's fifty and there's a hundred, so we can probably brute force it if we're very uh, slick. Um, but even beyond that, we can probably like we can, we look at each cell once and then just see how much we can increase it, right? All right, let's take a look at how, how we think about this, right? North, south. Hmm. That's okay. That's fine. I think one thing that I was curious about 
um, and they drew it a little bit different. I think as a as a way to kind of I wouldn't say at red airing per se, but something similar just to kind of throw you off a little bit. But if but it should be, and this is what makes sense to me. But I was just checking it because I didn't want to say something inaccurate, which is that looking from the north and looking from the south, um, they should be symmetric, right? Meaning that if the highest building on row or uh, column three is eight, then it's going to be eight from the north or the south on the third column. Maybe you you know you flip in column uh, maybe in one it'll be column three and the other one is column two or something like this, right? Depending on which di direction. But either way, the shape of it will not change, right? And using the uh, same logic, uh, yeast and west will be the same thing as well, right? So what does that mean? That means that we only have to keep track of two things instead of four things. But then the other, uh, after that, the next observation is that um, basically for each cell, I'm looking at this zero here. You can't really see me highlighting it. But I'm looking at this, the, the green zero next to the three. Uh, yep, okay, just checking that you could see it on the screen. Um, looking at that, basically it means that on the on the on the um, horizontal side, you can increase it by as much as eight, and then on the vertical side, you increase it as much as four, right? So that means that essentially you can only increase it to four, which is the min of the max between the horizontal and vertical. And I believe that's pretty much it, right? Um, in the sense that I think basically we calculate all these things, and then we just take the min of the max of the two things, and then we redo it. Um, and because it doesn't change anything, we just have to do it once. There's no, uh, um, there's no iteration needed uh, in terms of, you know, you, after you finish building the first time, scanning it all the uh, all the buildings, um, you're done. Like there's no no additional changes because, um, yeah, right. Okay. So, okay, so let's just say uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, columns is equal to 0 times n and rows is equal to 0 times n. Um, and this is just basically um, just adding a little comment because I will mix them up otherwise. Cos is the the highest of ro uh, of column uh, x, right? So co uh, cos of i, right? Something like that. Okay, so then now we just do, uh, do, 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 and then we have grid of x, y. Uh, what do we do with it? Well, cos of y, yeah, uh, <laughs> just making sure that I'm consistent. So this thing, right? I don't know why I didn't write both words. I usually do. This is how. Okay, right, and then that will give us the outline of this of the thing from north and west, maybe. Yeah, I think so. And then which will give us the entire outline. And then now, what are we returning? We're returning the maximum total sum that could be increased. Okay, so yeah, so we have total is equal to zero, and then we do it again, right? So then now on this cell, as we said, we want the min of the row sub x, cos sub i, and then. Um, so this gives us what we can build up to. So then we want um, this number minus a grid of x, y, and then we want to make sure that it is at least zero and add that to total. Right. Right, and then that looks good. Enough to submit, and there we go. Um, yeah, so the input is actually n square number of cells. Um, the algorithm that we did is going to be linear uh, in terms of time because you have to look at each cell once. There's no way around it. And we do it twice. So it's going to be linear time. In terms of space, it's actually sublinear square root of n or n to the one half, if you will, um, because we only need O of n. We only need square root of the linear <laughs> of the input size space. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, that's all I have. So stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.